Hi, Kelly. Hi, Hi. everyone. I hope everyone is well. Hi, Helen. Happy birthday. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, let's just wait a minute for some more people to come on. I'm just checking in my app right now to see which apple has the, the least amount of calories, a gala or a Granny Smith. <laughs> Granny Smith. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that. <laughs> Always Granny Smith. <laughs> How do I do this? Okay. Well, let's wait for a few people to come on. People are always late. I'm late for everything. Mm -mm. Is your boyfriend there with you or just you? He's downstairs, yeah. <laughs> his, he broke his lunch container today. And I'm like, oh, you had a day, honey. Oh, my. He broke his lunch container. So, and I'm like, I had so many fires put out today with ours. So I'm like, oh, your container. <laughs> Poor thing. <laughs> Poor thing. Oh, okay. I got my new. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to just hop into this. Um, more people are joining, and I'll just add them as we go along. So we're going to look at chronometer tonight, specifically chronometer, because it is my favorite tracker. Uh, I hope everyone can hear me. My microphone doesn't work with Zoom for some reason, so I just am using the computer one. So chronometer is my favorite tracker. Not only was it Canadian, it was created by an Irish guy and a Canadian guy together imagine that and here I am Irish Canada so um, actually the Irish guy has agreed to have him or one of them come on the podcast soon so that will be fun to uh, kind of pick their brains but I've been mm -hmm. using chronometer actually before I even knew it was created by an Irish guy because of its vetting system chronometer vets the numbers for so long my fitness pal was dominating the market when it came to tracking apps and there's lots more now but my fitness pal was dominating the market but what people didn't know is they weren't vetting a lot of their numbers they were letting people just add in numbers without actually making sure that whatever calories or percentages or grams people were putting in they weren't actually being vetted and from the very beginning chronometer has been very specific and open about how they vet everything and if you've used chronometer Jackie I know you have Chelsea I know you have you know that when you do add a food or a recipe it will then ask you would you like to be notified once we have basically vetted this we'll email you and I'm like no 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 just do it thanks um but chronometer apart from that it also gives professionals a professional dashboard or platform which I'm going to share my screen with you in a minute so you can see what I see when I access my clients accounts there's a couple of things I want to make clear though is that not everyone needs to track but some people do. I have lots of clients that once they're given specific orders, do this, this, and this, that's perfect. And it works for them and they will get results every week and they'll never need to track. And obviously that's the ideal situation for all of us to not have the stress of tracking. But then there's the special few of us that do have to track so that we can kind of hone things in or refine things um, and, and just have someone, even if you're working with some sort of practitioner, have a look at what you're consuming so that they can help to tweak things as well. And some people, again, they'll never have to track, but some people are going to need that extra I don't want to say restriction, but they need the extra help to really 
see through clear lens what they're actually consuming like a realistic outlook um there is there is people that that need to track but they don't track and because of that they're almost kidding themselves um and they pretty much are kidding themselves they need someone to say hey like this is actually what's happening uh Jackie can you just mute your microphone please um it's just a bit of background noise so I'm going to share mine it is a good tool to have in a sense and I'm trying to walk I'm purposely trying to talk slower so I don't lose anyone or overwhelm anyone because tracking the idea of tracking to many people especially with how we live nowadays is already like stressful it's like what you're telling me I have something else to add in now I have something else to do I've already got 20 million things to do um so I want to kind of take a slower approach to looking at this and how it may be beneficial and there are people that do track and then they'll do it for a certain amount of time but then they can stop and they have a visual kind of idea of what different amounts and portion sizes look like that work for them, that will give them results. And then there's people that track that love tracking and they track everything, their cycle, their sleep, their blood sugars. I may or may not be speaking about myself. They track everything and they love to track and they will do that forever. And those are more the type A personalities as well. Um, it can be time consuming, but if you plan it well and you get used to using the app and it, it becomes more habit and I'm going to go through it because there are ways it does save your favorites. It does kind of recognize your trends that can make it easier and faster. So I'm going to share my screen. I think first on the agenda, I want to show you what the dashboard looks like from the professional end so you can see what I see. Um, hi, Tracy. Yeah, I was like, who is Mark? <laughs> um, I want you to see what I can see from my point of view because the what you see on your app and what I see are quite different. Um, so I'm going to share that screen now so everyone can see. Um, I just full transparency because I know the guy who created chronometer they did do me a deal on how many clients I can have for a certain price a little bit better than if I didn't know them so just to put that out there um so this is my professional screen here um, and you can see, and I can remove and add clients as I want. I'll hop in and change. I am, I'm capped at a certain amount of clients mm -hmm. based on my package that if I want to add new clients and I've already hit my allocation, I'll remove a client and a client will notice a change in their app when the professional access has been taken away. So we'll look at a few. I'm going to go into Catherine's. I don't think she will mind too much. Uh, Catherine's away right now, so she didn't log in today, but I'm going to use her as an example. So when I log into someone's screen, this is what I see. On the mm -hmm. right hand side, the orangey pinky squares are going to tell me like they've actually entered something in today. So I can check that out here down here. I can see the macros. Uh, one of you, not you, but a client was asking earlier, like, what exactly are macros? And it, I don't know why, I don't know what happened somewhere along the line when people started talking about macronutrients and tracking macros, it got intimidating for people. Um, and I know most of you understand it, but people are going to watch this later. So macros are macro obviously stands for big there are big nutrients and your macronutrients are going to be your protein carbs fat a fourth one would be alcohol alcohol is a macronutrient and there's an argument being put out now in the health and science world that ketones should be considered a macro 
I wouldn't consider them. I would just put them in part of fats. It's the same gram per gram as fat is for calories. But um, and then your energy generally will fall under macronutrients, even though it's not a food per se. So when someone sets targets, when your practitioner or your whoever's helping you on your health journey sets your macros, they're going to set targets. And the idea is that you hit them or you stay pretty close to them each day. And your practitioner will set them based on your goal, your activity level, where you are right now in your journey, your height, your age, all that stuff. Um, so let's look at what Catherine has in here. This is a good kind of idea. And this is the layout I like is where I can see where people like, okay, she had breakfast here. And then I can see Okay, this is what she had for lunch and then dinner. I know it's kind of basic and obvious. Sometimes people won't break them up into the different categories and they'll just log everything when they remember, which is fine. I can usually say, okay, that was breakfast, that was lunch. I can usually gauge, I know what people are eating. But um, then if I wanted to say, oh, how come Catherine's, Spolumbo sausage was so high in like calories it's not but if I was to say that I'd be like okay well she had 150 grams of that and then I can edit that if she got the grams wrong but I can also see down below where that fits into her protein and how much she gets got of her protein in that so if you see, I had clicked on Spolumbo's and now that's going to tell me, well, that portion gave her 25 grams of protein. And these are approximate as well. Um, but moving on here, and I will go into what the app looks like. But here, if someone asks me, hey, can you set my macro targets? Can you set specific targets? I'm going to go in here to profile and targets. This is going to show me all Catherine's details. I don't think she's going to mind um, that it's going to show me like the start weight. It's also going to show me this basal metabolic rate. That's just an estimation. That was just a calculation done. It does not mean it's accurate by any means. Catherine could have a higher basal metabolic rate or a lower. This is literally just an equation um, and it has errors. Generally, I just keep everyone's activity at sedentary because I don't want people eating their exercise or movement calories. Um, Catherine's target is a little bit lower based on her specific needs. She had a back injury. She wasn't moving a lot. Uh, she had a lot of inflammation going on there. Uh, these are not her actual targets because as you can see, that's a lot. Well, when I set them, so these are actually her targets. I will set usually at grams. So you can see she's having, her target is 125 grams per day for protein. Her carbs are 94, which is a good target for her considering her activity level now with her back and inflammation and then her fats are 42. If I'm really going to change numbers or set macros, it's going to be in here. I'll always use fixed values and I also will always um, use total carbs, total carbs, just tracking all carbs, because um, there can be a lot of error when people are logging carbs. So I like to just play the safe game and go with total carbs. Also, if I'm going to change someone's macros, it's rare I'll ever reduce protein. If anything, I increase protein. But usually, and not just me, most practitioners, if we're going to change anything, it's going to be the fat and the carbs. And depending on the individual, and I'll know like their body type, if I've been working with them for a while and how they respond, 
it'll be the fats that I'm moving first to see what kind of results we can get. It is individual, it can vary on their inflammatory response, but that's what I'm doing. So then I'll set the targets in there and you go back to Catherine's diary and she is going to see that here in the macronutrients, uh, you see her targets. She's got 1,250 calories, which is pretty low. And we have spoke about that. Uh, then her protein, carbs, and fats. So this is just, again, for that Spolumbo sausage. This isn't what she had that whole day on Monday. This is what she had the whole day on Monday. And that was still pretty low as well. Let's look at someone else and see... Uh, This client is a good, um, he's a good example. So he's getting a lot better last week or yeah. So let's go back to the fourth, third. Okay, so when he started tracking, he was making an effort, which is great. And I had set his targets, as you can see below, a lot higher than Catherine's. And he is the man in his 50s. And um, But he was just putting them in as he was making up the recipes as he was going on and just adding them like this. And then I was like, well, I'm glad you're making the effort. And I, yeah, I can see your macros here and if they're accurate, you're like way under target, like you're totally not eating enough. But then again, I don't even know if these recipes are accurate, like 200 calories lunch seems pretty low. So I don't know if he's um, adding everything in properly, like only 10 grams of protein. So I don't like it when people do it like this. And this is a good example, because I prefer it to be individual or I can't actually see like, well, what nutrition are you getting? What is in this? What's in this supper? What did you have? I then have to follow up with the client. Whereas had he broken it down into individual items, then I would have been able to see. Then luckily enough, someone came along and helped Tom and showed him how to actually do it better uh, so that I could see. So not only does it help him, it helps me. So now I can see, okay, well, this is what he had. This is good breakfast for a grown man, like a good amount of protein there. Could probably have some more fat, but I also know there's some good issues there. And we watch the fat because of bowel tolerance. And that is due to hypothyroidism, actually. So he doesn't tolerate a lot of fat, and that's very common. And then I can see his lunch, and I'm like, okay, that's good protein. Carbs pretty good, again, grown man, and he's burning a lot of energy through his daily life. And I recently increased all his food, because if you saw well, you did see back the two weeks ago before he was actually putting individual items in, he was averaging like 600 calories a day for a man in his 50s. That was crazy low, I would, especially with already having hypothyroidism. That was just exacerbating the problem. Uh, dinner, good. Yeah, pretty good today. Uh, we brought in some seafoods. I, I would like it better quality seafood for the iodine to support his pyroid. But you see how I can log in now and I can say, okay, seafood, iodine, probably not the best source, but at least I know and I can see, okay, collagen, he could probably do a little bit more. Okay, he's having the famous Tulsi and ginger tea. That's great. We've got our Granny Smith apples. So it really helps me see. And then if I'm working with this client, then I know, okay, so-and-so has this condition. They need help with this, this, and this. Are we getting the nutrition in here that they need? to um, support whatever the condition is. We've spoken about bringing in some Brazil nuts for Tom. We're hit and miss with dark chocolate in the morning for Tom because again, bell tolerance as well. Um, his hypothyroidism 
royalism is quite severe. So it's, we're kind of not in a catch 22 right now. We're, because the doctor is debating whether or not medication is necessary. And it clearly is, in my opinion. But if the doctor doesn't help, then I have to slowly make the nutrition changes and the supplements. But this, because of this, and because of his needs, having access to his diary, and I can change things. And also, if you haven't noticed before, and some of you have, I can leave notes um and i can say do this or high five or great job great today tom save notes and then you'll see that note there and that will pop up on your app or i might leave another one down here saying please don't use blue diamond can we use a better brand or whatever it is so that's the professional. There is other things I can adjust the targets and schedule them to change at Christmas. I want to starve everyone and reduce it. I can see charts. I can get nutrition reports for the whatever weeks. I, of course, can do print offs, which is great. I can see, um, I can add notes, but I tend not to do this because these ones don't show up in your diary. Um, and then also, I can look at, well, the custom meals and whatever else that Tom has added in, or I can search specific foods to help him. So there's a lot I can do on the dashboard. I really like having this ability, but I didn't have this ability with... Um, my fitness pal, there is an option with my fitness pal where someone can send me a code and I can access their my fitness pal as they see it on their phone, but it's not as clear to me. It doesn't give me the clarity, the numbers, the specifics, the way chronometer does. So that's all like about me, why I love chronometer, why I like my clients using it, why it's so easy for me. But with the clients, when they start using chronometer, they're going to see something different. Now I'm going to share the screens um, of the app now, just so you know, I keep my phone app, of course, everything in night shift and dark mode for the blue light. So it will look black, um, but it's still going to be the same layout as well. This is important. Chronometer is free. It's free for you. It's free for the client. I pay for the professional dashboard, but it's free for you. You don't need to get the gold access. People always ask this. You don't. There is an option. You just need the free one, not the gold one. I can access your account regardless if you have the free or the gold, um, because that comes up quite a lot. And I'm not sure if it's just the options have changed because Chronometer did actually an update on the dashboard and the app recently, and it, it changed a couple of things. But um, let's pull up what the app is going to look like. So you're going to download the app, and the numbers are just going to be random. Like the targets are going to be random. And at that stage in the beginning, I will generally say to someone, look, don't worry about the numbers. I want you to just get the hang of it. Just play around with it for a couple of days. Let's just start to add in um, some foods. See if you can find some of your favorite foods. Try some recipes. Just, just get used to it before I go anywhere near the numbers. And then next step is to ask the client to get a bit more consistent for at least a week. So then if I do want to change numbers, 
I have something to compare it to. I have an idea of what they're doing and what their trends are. And I can look back on that previous week and then I can change it to whatever numbers I see fit or tweak things or see, I'll go, I was looking at someone earlier and I was like, okay, that was pretty good, but her protein is very low. Most people don't have a problem hitting their fat targets or going over them. Fat is very easy to hit and go over as many as you know. Uh, carbs, pretty easy, but some people will still be under carbs, especially if they're like dieting or they're conscious or they're being more aware that they're eating healthy. Carbs might be a bit lower. Fats, usually most people always go over fats. Um, that's where we have to kind of rein things in. Protein, though, is usually something people struggle to hit. Um, so yeah, I'm going to, I'll, I'll cover that now, Chelsea. So when you do start using chronometer, you're just going to just play around with it, get used to it and create some sort of data that I can use for comparison when I set your macros. So Chelsea just asked, how do we know what to set our macros for? I know the guide shows us how to calculate the calories. Yeah, and that's just, it. it's just an approximation. So if you have access to a professional or someone that's helping you on your health journey, like you do Chelsea, they're gonna be happy enough to help you with that. There are kind of general guidelines for setting macros there's kind of two fields that practitioners fall into when they're looking at percentages for macros so we'll look at okay what someone's height their age their current weight what is doable so if someone for example is 200 pounds and I ask, well, what's your goal weight? And they say 150 pounds. Okay, generally it is um, 100 calories for every pound, 10 calories for every pound. Um, so then I will say, okay, well, her goal is 150 pounds. If I drop her to 150 calories, that's a huge jump. I could probably do it because it's still a fair amount of calories. And this is where it gets tricky because I'm going, okay, someone is 200 calories. I'm just going to guesstimate they're consuming 2000 calories. So we're matching their weight and their calories, 200 pounds, 2000 calories. Most people, not to digress, don't eat 2,000 calories. That's very high, but this is just an example. And I say, okay, well, I'm going to drop her to 1,500 calories. So I'm cutting 500 calories a day, which is quite a lot. It is doable, but we run the risk then of slowing down the metabolism too much or causing a plateau too soon or we've dropped the calories too much that if we need to change them again, that, that we don't have much to play with. And you gotta look at what's doable and the client's situation. Do they have hypothyroidism? Do they overtrain? Do they have hormone issues? So I'm in a roundabout way, I'm answering your question, Chelsea. So your practitioner will set them for you. But if you were to do them yourself, it's generally, um, you look at, okay, well, what, what's your goal weight? What do you want to be in regards to your goal weight? 150 pounds, okay, we'll do 1,500 calories. We're gonna match the weight, the goal weight, the calories. And then you've got 1,500 calories. How are you going to break that down? There is really like two main fields. Um, when I'm talking about like balanced nutrition, where you're including all the macronutrients, um, one side will do a 40, 30, 30 split. And that's going to be 40% protein, 30% fat, 30% carbs. There is another field that will do 40% carbs and then 30% protein and 30% fat. 
I, based on current research, I don't agree with the latter. So I will go with the first one. I will go with the 40% protein for many reasons. And one of them is most people don't hit their protein targets in any way, even if they are lower. So you have to push them towards the higher one. But protein is essential for so many processes, not just what we think muscle building, essential for hormones, bone integrity, uh, mental health stomach acid thyroid production immune system like protein is very important most people don't hit it um and the general guidelines with protein especially when it's recommended like through the rda it's like 0.8 grams per pound of body weight now we're seeing new research coming out saying like you could double or more than that and reap an abundance of um rewards. There was a recent study I heard cited by Dr. Gabrielle Lyons, and she's a leading researcher in the world of protein and how it affects anatomy and physiology, but especially as in the elderly and as we get older and why it's so important. And she was saying like, look, this new study has showed that when it protein was increased to two grams per pound, that the benefits outweighed any potential issues of having too much protein in your diet. So I like to go with the higher protein. Protein is very thermogenic as well, which means because it's so hard to digest, you end up increasing your metabolism. It's like it activates a fire inside you because you're using a lot of energy to digest protein. You increase your metabolism, but because of that thermogenic activity, you actually only obtain or absorb 70% of the calories from protein rather than 100. It's pretty much 99% of the calories you absorb from fat. And I think it's like 90% of the calories you absorb from carbohydrates. So 70% is pretty good range. And you're still getting all the nutrition and the metabolic activity and all that good stuff. Um, so I keep the protein higher and then I'll do 30% of the remaining calories is going to go to carbs and 30% to fat. And like I said, the first thing then I might play around with is fat if I know the client has gut or digestive issues. In chronometer, there is an area that will basically allow you to change. Let me pull it up. It'll allow you to change your numbers yourself. It'll give you a target option. I have this in here. Uh, so we'll give you the option to change your own targets. Um, no, no, no. And if you change the targets, they're not going to be 100% accurate. So if you go into the settings, you're going to see uh, macronutrient settings and nutrient targets. Well, that can be confusing. So what you're actually going into is the macronutrients where you can manually change them in there. Um, and then the energy settings option, it will let you kind of guesstimate what your basal metabolic rate is. Again, that's just an equation. So that's a guesstimation. Um, and then if you go into the macronutrient settings, not only does it let you change them to the way I had changed them on the dashboard, like set specific grams, it will give you the option to do macro ratios so you could just put in okay i have 1500 calories a day i want to put in these ratios so you could do 40 30 30 and it will do the calculations for you chelsea and then that will set your macro targets there's also one for a keto calculator i don't use that not a huge fan of keto uh, i definitely see it falling by the wayside now but that is the option. So that would be in the macronutrient settings here. The nutrient targets would be more refined to your specific minerals and vitamins. So I hope that answered your question, Chelsea. Uh, let me know in the chat. So this is the screen that 
Great. This is a screen. Mine is black again. So when you open your app, you're going to see um, the first screen that you're going to see is going to be, well, there's going to be a couple of options down the bottom and they're going to be home, diary, foods, and settings, provided yours is up to date. Home, I never go on that. It's irrelevant. It means nothing to me. This is a tracker. I just want to track where my macronutrients and nutrients are. So I'm staying on the diary tab. There's four dots. The first one, which I should probably share with people, the first one is going to, it's confusing for people. That's why I don't use it at all. Uh, so let me just share that with everyone. So the first one, um, yeah, I do send messages to myself so I can have an idea of where I am. I have pictures everywhere. Okay, so the first screen is going to look like this consumed, burned, remaining. This screen is very confusing to people. So I try to keep people away from this screen. They don't understand. Okay, this is an okay. estimation. Yeah. I didn't see anything change on the screen. Oh, can you guys not see this one? It still says energy, protein, carbs, fat. Oh, okay. All right. Now, let me see. You are Okay, let me fix that. Thank you for that, Amanda. Okay, we got energy. Can you see this one? Is this one showing up? It should say, yeah. okay. Yeah, this one's empty. yeah. Okay, so this screen here is the one that I avoid. That's the first one, as soon as you open the diary, we avoid that because this here is just a guesstimation based on an equation, a mathematical equation. It is not going to be relevant to actually what you've burned today. This says, today I burned 2,613 calories. No, I didn't, I didn't. And this is an accumulation of my exercise and my proposed basal metabolic weight or metabolic rate based on their equation. But this is nowhere near what I burn in a day. So people will look at this and be like, oh my God, I burned so much and I have this much left that I can eat based on this being subtracted from this. And I'm like, no, you're just confusing yourself. So we don't, like as soon as you open your app, it should immediately go to this screen, the second dot. You should always just see this screen because this is all that's important. If you're looking at the energy burned and remaining, you are just going to get confused. And we, I do want to keep this as simple as I possibly can. So these are my targets. Uh, this was taken earlier before I had anything filled in, I think. So uh, I did eat today. Even if you were to just put in supplements and teas, you would still get a small change down here. So I have 1,350 calories allocated to me. That's low, but that also is takes into consideration my refeed days as well and activity levels. And because I'm at maintenance, I may have an extra refeed. But anyway, this is just a guideline for you. So my protein is 130, but I try to hit 150. But at minimum, I'm at 130. Carbs, I'm at 100. I know they're nice round numbers. And my fat is low because I don't do well on a lot of fat. Sometimes I'll get away with 35 grams, 
but I keep it at 30. I'm happy if I hit that. If I hit 35, it's not a big problem. But this is the screen we're always looking at. It's the second dot in. You always keep it on that one. And that just takes away a bit of the stress. So um, as the day went on, I start to add in more stuff. And we're going to, earlier I was like, if you know you can add in collagen. Um, so as the day starts to go on, I'll start to add in. Okay, well, what does my food look like as we're going along? So here, you can see, you guys can see, I practice what I preach. Got my zinc, got my carry, four sigmatic. Pretty much most of the foods that we use are in chronometer. And a lot of them is because I've added them over the years and then chronometer vets them and then they add them to their, would you call it food dictionary? They add them to their files, so they're there for us. So as you can see then, my energy at that time of the day, actually, uh, at that time of the day, that was only around lunchtime. So I hadn't even had my dinner at that stage. I don't think, or that was before dinner. I think that was, yeah, that was before even lunch. You can see my fat was a little bit higher, but at this stage I'm looking and I'm going, okay, well for the rest of the day now I have 700 calories left, which is not a bad amount. Um, hey, Shemaine, um, mm -hmm. in the Organica collagen screen right now. Um, Are you wanting? Yeah, I am. I'll change it. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Amanda, for keeping me in line. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> bear with me people I wish Facebook would make this easier for me to do but they don't okay can you see this one yeah you should yeah. be able to see this one. So you see here, I have, so I'm looking at my protein. I'm like, okay, I have 58 grams of protein. Now I need to make up for another 70 grams of protein. I'm watching my carbs. Okay, I've got like 40 grams of carbs left. And based on that, I can plan like the remainder of my meals and what they're going to look like. Sometimes I will add in, more fat earlier in the day instead of having it later in the day again individual i play around based on my goals um but you get an idea like everything the most common foods that we use are going to be in here my fats again are low so this is just an example um but even your apple cider vinegar goes in there Everything can go in. You don't have to track your supplements. You don't have to track your teas. But I like to track my supplements because I'll be halfway through the day going, oh, did I take that? I can't remember if I took it. Because you know the days are go, go, go. And then I'll look back and I'll go, okay, good, I did. Some At one stage, because I'll take multiple digestive enzymes throughout the day, I will put in okay so I, I'll put in just the enzymes log once and then I'll have six enzymes but then I'll forget what time I took them at and I'm like did I take one at dinner it says I took six here but I can't remember when I took them so I started then putting them in separately at separate times as I was taking them I know it sounds time consuming but um I'm going to go into a bit now. Can you see this tab? I might as well just ask you, Amanda. On the top, it says all favorites, custom, common. Can you see that tab? Yeah, yeah, we can. Okay. So when you add foods, you can see here my most, 
not my most common ones. They're alphabetical order, but these are ones that the app has recognized. I use these a lot. So they're going to be here in my all section. And obviously I have used the app a lot. So it has an idea now of my trends. Like she takes apple cider vinegar every day. So this is what we're going to keep in her all. So the next time she needs to add it, it's here and it's easier for her to access. So these are my most common foods. Doesn't mean they're my favorites, but they're my most common ones. So Chronometer does try to make things easier and accommodate and just have the most regular foods that you use here. And the list is obviously extensive, but this gives you an idea. And this is just for the new people to understand. If you haven't used Chronometer, it can be like, oh my God, am I gonna have to search for all these foods all the time, every time I use this? No, because if I click into the app and I go into all, I'm just like clicking, oh yeah, I took essential amino acids, click, 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 click. Obviously that's time saving. Um, then you have the option. Hopefully you can see this, I'm on the favorites. I don't, it always puts in peanuts roasted and unsalted for me. I don't know why I don't even eat peanuts, but anyway, in the favorites, as you go through and you're adding a specific food, each food is going to have a star beside it. Like this one, hopefully you can see this screen says Organica Enhanced Collagen. There is a star beside it. If you click the star, every time you add a food that you know, like this is my favorite, I'm gonna be using this a lot. If you click the star, then that's going to save it into your favorites. And then that's going to be listed here. So again, time saving because your more common foods that you know you actually like, um, they're going to be under your favorites. So not just all, which is kind of AI um, populated. This is actually the manual ones that you've done yourself. So it's just that's a matter of every time you add a food, if you know, like I'm going to eat this dark chocolate a lot, I'm going to press the star and it's going to save it into your favorites. So that's uh, and in our case, in many of our cases, it really is only like a five days a week thing. So the list shouldn't be too extensive. I will track my supplements still on refeed day. Because again, I don't want to lose track of what I'm doing, but I don't track my food on refeed day because that day is anyone's guess what I'm going to eat or how much I'm going to eat. And if you're eating out or ordering in, it's just too much hassle to try guesstimate how much is in it and this, that and the other. But and even if I'm fasting, I will still put in my supplements. So I and that's just me. You don't have to do that, but you can put it in um, if you're like me and you lose track and go, did I take it? Did I not take it? What did I take? Um, so that's why I do it. This is an interesting one, the custom one. So along the top, so you're going again to at the bottom where you had the plus sign, there's add foods, there's the custom option. Uh, I, I've never made shortbread cookies, so I don't know what that is, but I did make these and this is gonna be helpful for you guys. See the avocado brownies, which many of us make. Uh, and even the sweet potato brownies, I think, are in there somewhere. I have added specific recipes that we use a lot. And now they're in Chronometer. And that's for everyone to access. I actually made these born again protein brownies a couple of weeks ago. I posted about them in the group. They're really good. Well, they're in there as well. So that's super helpful. It takes a couple of minutes to add the recipe, but then it's in there for when you need it. You can also scan barcodes, which I really like. I know my fitness pal does that as well and some of the other apps, but that can be super helpful for us. Sometimes that barcode will not register, but what will populate then is the option to uh, add it yourself. And at that stage, if you're going to add something yourself, 
I'll have to send a picture of this. So you're going to scan and it won't show up. And then it's going to give you the option to add in. So you would, it's so easy. You just have to take a picture of the front label, a picture of the nutrition label. It'll populate all the numbers. I double check because I'm like, well, I don't need them messing up my numbers. Double check, you press next to save it. And it will say, um, do you want to be notified once we have processed this? And I'm like, no, stop annoying me, just do it. Um, and at that stage, I'll click it as a favorite as well, because if I've gone to the trouble of adding it in, there's a chance I'm going to be having it again in the future. So I'll do that with adding in. If your camera doesn't take the picture properly or it's not clear, you can manually add in the numbers. Like it'll take a few minutes. It's pretty easy. But once it's there, it's there for good then. And then you have the option to also create a recipe as well. Um, and if you create the recipe, someone asked me about this earlier, they were adding in a recipe. And this was interesting because um, they were asking about servings and how you add in the weight. So I had just made up one that says, basically it, I made up cake. <laughs> the cake had blueberries in it. And those were just the two ingredients I used. So uh, you go into foods, you can do custom meals if you want. That's what Tom was doing. Uh, but you can go into custom recipes and add a recipe, like say the cake with blueberries or the, the yogurt mix for some people you can add in to chronometer. And you would do that in here. It will take you a couple of minutes, but again, once it's in there, it's in there. And then once you do that, it's going to give you this option. Can everyone see this where it says cake? So I added in cake and in order. It doesn't say cake, but it says create recipe. Okay. Thank you. See, I use Facebook so much. I got to get used to this. So when you go to create recipe, um, in order for me to move forward, you have to put in at least one tile and at least one ingredient. So I put in cake and blueberries. I put in 62 grams of blueberries. So you have the option. Her question was like, how do I put in the serving? Do I put in cups? You can either put in the weight. On average, a cup, if you were to measure in cups or tablespoons, uh, your average tablespoon is going to be 15 grams. The average ounce is going to be 28 grams. A cup is usually 250 grams or 250 mils, depending on if it's fluids or weight. Or you could click on this option here, which just gives you the serving. The serving then could be uh, how many, so this cake, it has one serving per cake because that's how I roll the whole cakes for me. So one serving per cake, and then you could add it in there under servings. And depending on what your recipe is and how much you're having it, then it's going to save that. So when you go back to add in your food here and you type in cake, and it will say custom beside it, uh, because custom means like you customized it, you added it. Like the brownies here, it says custom. I added it in here. They're all custom. So your cake recipe would be in here. But if you did just search it in all foods, the cake will come up here and then you can just add it. So this is really a walkthrough on how to add certain things. So we've gone through like you, you want to keep it on the second tab the second dot the i have it on the third dot now if you can all see and we'll go into that but in general you want to keep it on the second dot 
after a while of using chronometer, it will recognize the foods that you kind of trend towards and they'll be under all. Then you mark your favorites and they're going to be under favorites. Customs are going to be anything that you've added in yourself, be it from a label that you've maybe changed or a recipe you've added. The common uh, and supplements and all the rest, I never go near them ever. Honestly, I just stay around all or favorites. And because I'm such a creature of habits, I can just stay on all all the day all day and just scroll down and click 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 so it doesn't actually take that long after a while but then you can move on um so the favorites all and can everyone now see this one we're on the third dot this is how it'll look on your app and now we're kind of going we're refining things a little bit more into micronutrients this is not all of your micronutrients but these are for some reason the ones that chronometer has deemed the most important if i was to look at this the most important ones to me are going to be fiber vitamin c and b12 the rest generally take care of themselves. It's not too hard to get vitamin A in your diet. If you were tracking calcium, you'd see it here. Fibers, if I was looking, it would be fiber. I wouldn't pay too much attention to the rest. But fiber, just like protein, is one people struggle to hit. It says here I hit 103% at this time of the day. Yeah, my day was full at 530 I'm a little low on calcium because, well, I don't eat cheese. I didn't have yogurt today and my green vegetables were a little low today, which would be, but my folate was still good. So that's good. My, meta my potassium is generally higher, but today I didn't have electrolytes. Uh, and today I didn't have my vitamin C either, but everything else is pretty good. My fiber, most people's fiber is going to be set around 30 grams. 25, 30 grams is a good target for most people every day. So if you were curious about that, and really that's the only one I look at, I'm never too concerned about these because I know like I've covered all my angles and, and I don't track fairy dust per se because fairy dust doesn't have calories so I'm not concerned with that but if I did have mustard or relish or something I would track that um, but fiber is something I'll keep an eye on and if I was to click on the fiber there just like on the dashboard if I was to click on the fiber and say where did I get my fiber from today so I know in the future what foods are good for fiber then that's going to show me this screen here. And I had an RX bar, which was six grams of fiber, which is really good. I had a pumpkin spice RX bar. Six grams of fiber in one food is astronomically good. That's very good. RX bars and Lara bars are great for fiber because it's the dates. That's why you'll see some in the group like um, Jordan and... Uh, see they will post pictures of dates they eat a lot of dates to get their fiber you see I had sweet potato dark chocolate is a good source of fiber picari is actually really high in fiber um so that's going to tell me okay well anytime I'm low on fiber I know these foods are going to help bring that up there so that is super helpful because the of the two foods that people usually struggle with, it is protein and fiber, protein and fiber. Although fiber falls into the carb category, you can eat an abundance of carbs and hit your carb targets, but still have very low fiber. It's being conscious of which foods that you choose. Uh, then this last one, yeah, that was that. So, I think I've covered a lot there. Does anyone have questions? I don't want to continue to confuse people. With chronometer, it really is a matter of wash, rinse, repeat to get the hang of it. 
I do track exercise. You can add in exercise. You see it here. You can add in exercise and it will give the option to add in resistance training, the elliptical, walking, walking on a treadmill. It has the options walking at a certain speed. If you know what speed you walk at, I am 3.8 to 4 miles per hour. Um, it will give you the option for grocery shopping and housework and skiing and Pilates and group dance class. Like there's a lot of options in exercise. So I'll add them, but I add them there just for my reference. And because I'm a bit anal with tracking, but I do not eat my exercise calories. I just have them there for reference. And as well, because I use a whoop, um, a whoop to track HRV, calorie expenditure, all that fun stuff. I can look at what my whoop says it was, and then I can put it in here and then I can kind of gauge, well, how is this affecting my results at the end of the week based on my calories this week, what the whoop says I burned, like you don't have to do that. But these tools can be very helpful, especially for someone like you, Amanda, who wants to refine things because of the life you choose to live. You're athletic, you want to make sure you're on point with everything, you're hitting all your targets. Um, so that can be really great for that. Um, and that many of you know that recently I started using a continuous blood glucose monitor. I had used one in 2018, but with stress increasing lately and changes in my exercise, um, I don't know if you can see it. Well, you can't see it. Um, it actually hurt more than I thought it would put on. Um, but I wanted to see how is that influencing my blood sugar? How is everything influencing my blood sugar so that then I can look at my food and know, well, this food messes up my blood sugar, or this food causes me to overeat, or this food messes up my sleep. And I've noticed my blood sugars drop quite low when I sleep, which is ideal because that's when the heart rate and the core temperature now obviously not so low that I want to go into diabetic zone um but it's interesting to see earlier um I had some bar Frank if you know the brand Frankie's clouds they're sprouted cheese puffs I had like a handful of them and my blood sugars jumped. They almost doubled in the space of eating them in 10 minutes. And I was like, whoa, I didn't think these impacted me this way. But then that was just before a leg workout. As soon as I did a leg workout, the blood sugars plummeted really fast. And I noticed that the other day as well. I've always spoke about how your leg muscles are your most important muscles when it comes to blood sugars. And they're the first muscle group to go when we start seeing diabetes and insulin resistance it's usually because the leg muscles have been lost they become insulin resistant and they've gone catabolic so when I did Sunday and today a leg workout both days it's like my blood sugars dropped so it literally is that the leg muscles mine are big and strong and obviously um, receptive that they just sucked that blood sugar in and it was amazing to see that but then Monday even though I was like good with my nutrition on Monday my stress was very high and technically I was in pre-diabetes range all Monday because of my stress so these tools can be super helpful it obviously depends how much you want to refine your journey and refine everything it can cause, I will admit, it can cause someone to be over obsessive. So sometimes you have to take a step back and say like, this really is just a tool. This is just a learning thing. It 
doesn't mean I'm going to this, that or the other. This is just to help me kind of understand how my body works. Um, and I won't use the continuous glucose monitor once that sensor expires in like 10 days. I probably won't use it again for a couple of months. I was thinking it might be interesting to use it around Christmas and New Year's and see what that's like because I usually will take a diet break around then so that will be interesting but it's not something that I would there are practitioners that will just constantly wear glucose monitors I wouldn't there is a line where you get over obsessive with the numbers and many of you know that so you have to rein yourself in and for the time you're using it say this is what happened for the time I was using it um so someone said something in the chat Thank you very much. I was going, yeah, 10 hours sleep to get in. This is a neat app. Yeah. So does anyone have any more questions around chronometer? Do you like it? If you've used it, do you like it? Do you think you can turn off your mics as well? You don't have to type. Um, do you think you'd use it? Do you think it could benefit you? I think it's super beneficial. Jackie, I've played around with yours a few times. Helen, I don't think you've used chronometer. Uh, Amanda, I know you have, but uh, I don't have access to you. I do like it. I will start to use it for sure. And again, it's free. So why wouldn't you play around with it for a while? The more you get used to it, the faster it gets for you to add stuff like I've shown. I really hope this is helpful because it can be overwhelming for people. I get that, especially when it's new, but it that's why my first introduction is, let's just play around with this first. And then the next week, I don't want you to be perfect. I just want you to add in the numbers, get the hang of it and have some sort of comparison for me that if I do want to change or help you set macros, then I already have an idea. She's kind of in this range. Um, you're welcome, Helen, and happy birthday again. So I think we'll leave it at that. Unless someone else has another question, I will share this then with the population once it's uploaded. Uh, I do think this is a very valuable tool. I do not get any kickback from Chronometer whatsoever. But the reason I want you guys to have this tool and know how to use it, because it makes things easier for me, it helps me help you, especially if there is a plateau or especially like, let's say, Amanda, you decide, I don't want to do all these triathlons or anything anymore I'm going to go straight into uh Cal Canada's strongest woman well then I'm going to have to change your macros or let's say someone gets diagnosed with gallbladder issues I'm going to have to change your macros so in that sense I want you to use it because it makes things easier for me as well so I hope you guys did find this helpful thank you for taking some of your time um, you're welcome. Thank you for spending your evening with me, Jackie. I know you love our Wednesday chats. Next week will be a good one. Uh, and if there is questions that come to your mind, just send them my way and I will answer. So thanks everyone. Uh, 